नमस्ते वेलकम वेलकम टू द क्लास फॉर ऑल डांसर्स फॉर ऑल परफॉर्मिंग आर्टिस्ट वन ऑफ द एब्सोल्युटली मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट एरिया इज अभिनय अभिनय इज एक्सपाउंडेड इन डिटेल इन द नाट्यशास्त्र एज यू हैव स्टडीड इट एंड अभिनय इज एक्सप्रेस टॉक्ट अबाउट टॉट बाय एवरी वन अक्रॉस द परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स हाउ द थियरीज एज एक्सपाउंडेड इन द नाट्यशास्त्र बिकॉज भरत टॉक्स इन द एरिया ऑफ नाट्य विच इज totality includes dance drama and music so how it has to be translated to dance we have to work on it but first we have to understand bharata's theory and then how do we go about so the as you know the dramatic art reaches us through the abhinaya or histrionic representation in a literary composition the components of experience like the characters situations the speech physical and psychological reactions in bharata's term or in the natyashastra term vibhava anubhava and vyabhichari bhava are only presented through the words of the literary artist in the dramatic presentation there is an additional advantage namely they can be presented in a concrete form and can be visually perceived an actor for instance can play a particular character using appropriate makeup costume and account speak the words as he is intended to use and act the physical and psychological states the character is supposed to have gone through and thereby create a live piece of experience so to say on the theatrical stage for us the event or situation in which the character acts and reacts may not be left to our imaginative perception or to our understanding of the meaning of the word written or spoken it also can be reconstructed on the stage by the use of suitable drapery curtains props property special effect of the stage arrangements lights music and so forth such visual and oral aids that the theater may utilize make the experience concrete tangible and palpable for the spectator where he can use most of his means of perception to grasp and accept the experience presented to him this is an aspect which is particular and exclusive to drama bharat therefore gives us yet another definition of drama and says the entire nature of human beings as connected with the experiences of happiness misery joy sorrow all when presented through the process of histrionic representation is to be called natya the natya shastra described in great and minute details the texts of and techniques of abhinaya theoretically abhinaya is the only mode of presenting an experience in drama the literally word serving as a script to carry out the dramatist intent and as a base for the abhinaya practically the natya shastra seems to provide not only a theory of drama but also the guidelines and rules for producers and actors to learn and make 
use of the technique of Abhinaya in dramatic presentation. But when it comes to dance, it is a little different in the sense that in a solo dance form, especially in the solo dance form, it is only one dancer and during his or her performance, they go through all the expressions in Abhinaya of all different characters, different age-wise, different nature-wise, different country-wise, every way. And only and only through the Angika, only on, only through the Mukha through the Chesta, that the dancer has to bring out all this in the Abhinaya. It is the Satvika and it is the Aharya which becomes the most important for a solo dancer. Of course, there is Vachika through the music which is also very supportive. So, for a dancer, it is ek aharya lasya, whereas you do not change aharya. And in one aharya, in one setup, you have to present all characters. Abhinay is the only mode of communicating dramatic experience to the spectators. The word is from, form from the root na, preceded by the preposition abhi. Abhi is the, abhinaya is the means to carry the poet's content and its aesthetic and philosophic significance towards the spectators. It employs the mode of direct <coughs> presentation, visual and oral perception in virtue of the intoned speeches, gestures and movements, facial expressions and physical poses, makeup, costume and etc. Thereby, it enables the spectators to be aware of the rich meaning that the poet's words carry and take the experience directly. It follows that the caliber <coughs> and <coughs> quality of Abhinaya would be judged by how successfully the dramatic presentation is made and how effectively the poet's content is carried home so that a correct and adequate response is evoked. Bharata mentions how many kinds of Abhinaya? Yeah, four, right? Yeah, Vachika, Angika, Aharya and Satvika. Now, the most important for dancer is Angika Abhinaya, which is, let's say, we go into different kinds of uh, Abhinaya of Angika. Uh, one is the Cheshta Kruta, the type, it is the type of Angika Abhinaya that includes the combined movements of all the major and minor limbs of the body, which are of two kinds, the gait and the dance movement. It involves various types of gait suitable for different characters in a play their postures, seats for them and their lying down postures. They are all expressive of various mental states and emotions. The dance movements include, these dance movements include 108 types of Karana, various Angahara, Rechaka, Pindibandha, Bhedyaka and Akashiki and Bhauri Chari which are useful for both the actors and the dancers. The Anubhava of which represent physical reactions to an emotional experience and they are rendered in stage performance through physical manifestations and varied movements of the body. This is Angika Abhinaya and is treated rather fully and minutely in the Natya Shastra. Because the visual impact in a dramatic spectacle is forcefully conveyed by the gestures and movements of the actor playing a role on the stage. 
The Angika Abhinay is a necessary part in dance performance and some training in dance mode is always essential for an actor and especially in the performance of Sanskrit plays for carrying out certain types of Abhinaya. It is likely that the Natya Shastra entered into a detailed description of this aspect of histrionics to serve needs of both an actor as well as the dancer. The Angika Abhinaya has many aspects, but for our purpose it is broadly classified into three that is the Sharira involving the limbs of the body, Mukhaja the facial expressions and Chashtakruta affected through actions and movements. The Mukhaja of Angika Abhinaya involves the various movements of the limbs major and such as head and the inner limbs such as eyes, nose, cheeks, lip, chin, teeth, face and neck along with the meanings and mantle that is the Vini Yogas and the mental states, emotions expressed in them. The eyes also includes the movements of pupils, side lids, eyebrows as well as various glances and the gazes. For dance, Mukhacha is one of the most important Abhinaya as all expressions and emotions depicted by dancer are through the face and it is the most visible Abhinaya. And the Sharira type of Abhinaya involves various positions, gestures of single hand, combine or the joint hands that is Sanyukta and the Nritta Hastas. These hand gestures are connected with mental states and are also to be used to express certain things and ideas and that is the Vinayoga. They acquire a symbolic value and significance when they pertain to dramatic context and also in the pure dance mode. This type includes the movement of the limbs such as chest, sides, belly, waist, thighs, shanks, feet and various minor limbs such as knees as well as all the meanings and mental states, emotions expressed by these limbs. The dancer's body must speak and it conveys all emotions. Now we look into Vachika Abhinaya. The histrionics cannot connected with the recitation and delivery of speeches in a dramatic performance is what is called Vachika Abhinaya. Bharata recognizes its importance by calling it the body of the Natya. The other aspects like physical acting, makeup and costumes and even the psychological rendering convey only the meaning of the poet's words. Bharata write about exposition of vowels and consonants, euphonic combinations and the place of origin of syllables in the human body. As part of the Vachika Abhinaya, this is certain relevancy for nectar. For dance, Vachika Abhinaya is more music and poetry. Music includes all kinds of vocalization and instrumentalization and Silences also become music. It is the more homogeneity between dancer and the musicians, it brings out more intensity in the performance. And also the very important is Ahari Abhinay. This Abhinay is connected with what is known as Nepatya, the use of makeup, costume, jewelry, weapons, stage props and property necessary in a stage representation of drama. Abhinava Gupta says that it belongs to the Bahir Ranga, the external visual aspect of dramatic representation. Like a wall or canvas to a picture, the Aharya stands at the back of the whole production and hence Bharata's direction that a Sincere effort is necessary in putting up the Nepatya by all those who wish well with dramatic productions. Bharata divides Nepatya into four kinds, Pushta or the model work, Alankara or decoration, Angarachana or the painting of the limbs that is makeup and Sajiva or Sanjiva 
meaning use of living things like birds and animals in the course of dramatic production. Modeled objects or pushed or modeled were required as stage property or occasionally as part of scenery are affected in three different ways. The desired form of a thing may be made by joining together leaves or barks of trees, pieces of bamboo, skins, clothes, etc. Such a push is sandhima, an object or stage property contrived and operated by some mechanical device like pulling a string is called vyajima pushta, a model prepared by wrapping that is to say by overlaying layers of wax, lac and such is a veshtita pushta. The Natya Shastra tells us that all objects in the world which can be fashioned by imitation may serve as instruments of Natya if a performance demanded their use. These will include mansions, houses, temples, terraces, vimana, vehicles, various kinds of weapons, shields, armor, banners, mooth, inns and other immovable objects and replicas of the horse, elephant and so and so forth. This should first be fashioned with pieces of bamboo giving them the correct form and shape required. Then the figure should be wrapped with cloth and painted with delightful color. If the cloth is not available, palm or beech leaf could be used for wrapping. The weapons are to be fashioned by using grass and bamboo pieces, lac and goat pieces. Iron or heavy material is never to be used. Even in using wood, skin, cloth, bamboo or lac, special care must be taken that an object fashioned for dramatic use will be light in weight. An air of realism must be combined with the ease and convenience of stage business. The decoration ala thakka or decoration in the makeup of a dramatic role is affected with the use of flowers and garlands, ornaments and jewellery and appropriate garments. The Natya Shastra speaks of varied floral patterns that could be made. Flowers or garlands wrapped with fibers or grass Fibers of grass which could be used to encircle a part of the body, vestima, like a chaplet. Flowers so woven as to spread out like a piece of cloth, vitata, and possible to be used almost like a small netted garment. Clusters or banquets of flowers, sani ghatya, flowers woven or noted kudetka, granthima, flowers made into hanging garlands, pralaibita. The varied ornaments to be used by dramatic characters to play respective parts may similarly be grouped. Such ornaments are put on by piercing a part of the body, avedya, like an ear ornament. Such are simply put on the body, arupya, like a gold thread or different kinds of necklaces, such as are fixed by tying up, bandhaniya like a girdle, shoulder ornament, pearls, etc. and such as are attached to the part of the body by fastening that is prakshepya like an anklet. The Natya Shastra gives us a very long list of ornaments appropriate for male and female characters and also from the point of view of the country of their origin and the social caste to which they belong. The ornaments include different kinds of head ornaments, sirasa bhushanam, ear ornaments, karna bharana, rings, ornaments for the wrist, for the upper arm, for the neck, for the chest and the waist, for men, for women. Ornaments to be worn on in the hair, for ear, for forehead, including the artistic arrangements of the tilak mark and the use of flowers. The patra lekha for chicks, collarium for eyes and colouring for teeth if required, particularly white like pearls or red like lotus, rouge for the lower lip, besides other ornaments usually worn and special ones like the network of pearls put on the breast, 
different kinds of girdles made with clusters of jewels fastened in gold thread with tiny jingling bells, gold bells, kinkini attached to them. Use of the leck dyed applied to the sides and soles of feet. Decorative painting of legs is regarded as part of Aharya. The Natya Shastra even warns that an actor must place the ornaments correctly or he will make himself ridiculous. Also excessive use of ornaments and loading the body with them must be avoided. It will exhaust an actor, come in the way of free and natural movements and may result in too much perspiration or even a faint. Bharata indicates some special points in regard to the use of ornaments, garments and hairstyles for characters of different classes. The general principle being that of individual identity and proper distinction. And you can see here how aesthetically all this is told and brought out in the most simplistic manner which we today also feel that the ornaments and the costumes should be such that it will allow the emotions to come out very easily, very gently and allow oneness of the dancer with the audience. Heavenly men and women, ikhandaka, hair piled on head and pearls used in them. Women of gods, green garments and accessories. Lapis lazuli or pushya raga jewels. The vidyadhara women in white dress. Yaksha women and apsaras use of jewelry. Naga women, pearls. So here is a long list of women, their dresses, their names, the hairstyle. Then the makeup and costumes in general and the special colors that is used for Yaksha, Apsara, Gods like Sun, Rudra, Buddha, Fire and so and so forth. And then there is intense description of men belonging to different regions and they have different complexions like the that of heated gold, white, blue, yellowish, red. But for dramatic convenience convention, the certain directions may be used like kings would use red like lotus and yellowish red or blue. Then there is um, sages, uh, they are generally plum colored, but variations may be used for. And then there is Brahmin and Kshatriya, then barbarous and hill tribes and so on and so forth. The suitable beards have to be provided for male characters as part of the makeup. Generally celestial characters, royal patrone personages, kings, officers, may appear with clean shaven faces, but in case a beard has to be used, it should be nicely trimmed with the use of razor and a pair of scissors. Ascetics, forest dwellers uh, will have a thick and long beards and hair. The hair used for sticking a beard may be colored to indicate a particular mental condition, like the blue hair for distressed persons those in calamity or in penance and those who have still to fulfill a vow. Garments used in making out a costume may be suitably colored. For example, white color garments are to be used for ritual or auspicious worship. In religious observances, in marriage ceremonies, this and the costume of both men and women, God and other divine or servant divine beings, a picturesque multicolored costume. For Brahmins, minister, royal priest, officer in the king's harem and men, the three caste, generally a clean and white costume. Men, on intoxicated persons, travelers and men in calamity, a soiled costume, that is malina, a dress of barks and skins. Then for wandering ascetics, munis, 
chamberlain, there is reddish brown garments that is kashaya. Kings generally use picturesque and varied costumes, white only on religious and auspicious occasions. When they dress for war and fight, sangatika vesha, they will wear armors uh, and appropriate array of weapons. Makeup and costume also inclu include the use of headdress. Natya Shastra speaks of three kinds of crowns, that is gods and other celestial um, characters will wear a crown that covers the head from uh, uh, head. Uh, kings have to have a full crown covering the forehead and top of the head. Princes, commanders of army, chief ministers will, era, will, will wear a half crown. Other ministers, chamberlain, royal priests, chief merchants will wear a band of cloth wrapped around the head like a turban. Other characteristics will wear long hair or have a shaven head as required. Sages will have matted hair high on the head. The Vidushaka may have hair on the head like the crow's feet, Kakapada or he and a chela may wear either three tufts, uh, three tire shikha of hair or have a shaven head. Bharata also speaks of masks, Pratishishaka or Pratishishaha. They are to be prepared with ash or chaff, possibly also clay using an earthen jar as a foundation. Cloth is to be fixed on the shape with bilver pulp and oil. When up in the sun, holes for the eyes, nose, mouth and ears are to be made with sharp instrument, follow, forming the features like forehead. Uh, and these masks were worn with beautifully formed crowns in human impersonification. One presumes that the mask may have been used in playing the roles of certain demons as well as of animals and birds. The weapons which are to be used are fashioned by the process of modeling pushta and are expected to be proportionate to the physical build of the character who is to use them in dramatic business. Sajiva. Appearance of live animals and birds is referred to by term Sajiva and is regarded as, as part of Nepatya Abhinaya. What Bharata means by this may be conjugated as the introduction on stage of and non-living things by human impersonation to serve a dramatic purpose. Bharata says that weapons, mountains may appear in corporeal form and use the dress and speech of human beings. Similarly, peacocks, swans, etc. may be represented by dance, gestures and movements and animals by appropriate gait and body movements. Uh, Bhasha, we know, introduces Vishnu's weapons and Garuda in two of his plays and assigns parts to them. This is possible to be staged only if actor played these roles. It may similarly be assumed that the deer that figures in Kalidasa Shakuntla must have been played by a young actor. So, you see how much in detail uh, Bharata has gone and this is, this must be all his observation that he is able to put into practice. Uh, and then we now go to the Sattvika Abhinaya. The precise meaning of sattva as part of an aspect of histrionics is to be gathered from two different explanations Bharata has provided. In the section on Abhinaya, Bharata says that sattva is an essence human body. The emotional states bhava which human beings experience arise from sattva, that is to say due to the association of the body. They find an appropriate expression through the body. Uh, it is simple and natural expression of an emotional state is also called hava and 
the expression by way of gesture, flourish or movement acquires a delicate and charming quality is called hela. It is apparent that hela and hava and bhava are mutually connected and all of them represent aspects of sattva. As such, they belong to the body and rest in the physical nature of men. In the context of sattvika bhavas, Bharata says that sattva originates in minds. It denotes the equiposed state of mind. When the mind attains perfect concentration, sattva is produced. This is so because the physical expression of an emotional state like the horripilation, tears, loss of color and the like cannot simply be produced in acting unless the mind is fully concentrated and undistracted as it, as it happens in the experience in real life. Considering the double aspects of sattva, mind, emotional state and physical expression, sattvika abhinaya may be understood as the psychophysical representation. Whatever may be the actual condition to his own mind, the actor must be able to weep or express joy if the dramatic situation demands such a showing and produce appropriate physical reactions, facial expressions, voice intonation and symptoms of tears or jubilation in order to convince that he is experiencing sorrow or happiness. Such a piece of acting cannot be completely realistic unless an actor is living the role and not merely playing it. A show of emotional acting may be produced in virtue training, practice and theatrical aids or tricks. A superb simulation of emotion, however, demands a full concentration of mind on the part of an actor. This is sattva and the abhinaya where it is present is to be called sattvika abhinaya. Bharata rightly calls the abhinaya in which sattva preponderates as the supreme being. Sattvika abhinaya is so, uh, spoken as the fourth kind but it is easy to see it must underline recitation of dramatic speech vachika gesture and movements of the body angika and facial expression mukharaga at the back of all of which a concentrated undistracted mind must work it is with this idea that it is also described in connection with the samanya abhinaya samanya may mean what is common to all beings like verbal expression physical reaction and mental state or it may mean the aspect of Abhinaya which is common to all kinds of acting. It is a coordination of speech, body movements and mind particularly as they relate to the dramatic presentation of emotional states. A few examples may be used to illustrate how different kinds of Abhinaya come together in executing a particular state, a particular state of mind. This, for instance, which accompanies love and pleasure will be shown by a woman by the pedal way she stands or sits or walks and by the actions of her head, eyebrows and eyes. The man will exhibit vilas by steadily moving eyes and measure gait like that of a powerful bull and a talk prefaced by a smile. The abhinay of listening to a sound is done by slightly turning the eyelids down, turning the head to a sigh in the direction from which the sound is supposed to come and placing the forefinger near the ear. To indicate a mental reaction to the sound, an actor will turn eagerly towards it as if to desirable or age cable. Bail it if not. So, he will turn his head, contract his eyes and nose and shut his eyes. Apart from this, Bharata also described 
चित अभिनय एंड सामान्य अभिनय सामान्य अभिनय इज डिस्क्राइब एज द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ स्पीच बॉडीली मूवमेंट्स एंड नेचुरल ग्रेस बोर्न ऑफ द इनर स्पिरिट वाइल इज एन एक्सटेंशन ऑफ विच डील्स विद द बॉडी टू डिस्क्राइब और रिप्रेजेंट पिक्टोरियली द मटीरियल एंड नॉन मटीरियल ऑब्जेक्ट्स सच इज नाइट इवनिंग डार्कनेस हीट एंड सो ऑन ऑल्सो द रिप्रजेंटेशन ऑफ द फीलिंग लाइक जॉय एंगर पेन एंड सॉरो सो आफ्टर अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉट इज अभिनय यू विल हैव टू ट्रांसलेट इट in the dance style and in your dance as an individual dancer so please go through this module with great patience great details and great understanding so that you become a master of abhinaya in your dance thank you goodbye